do I have a doozy for you today? <laughs> So in this video, I'm gonna make another chopping board, but this one has got quite a unique pattern to it, and the strips you see me cutting now have to be very accurate in the thickness, otherwise the end pattern won't work. So I started out with these pieces of cherry wood um, I had, and I cut, uh, I ripped these first, and then just cut them to the a rough length uh, on the uh, mitre saw here. And then I used some wenge, uh, which I had still got some wenge left. So I've got a plank of that and put that through a couple of times. And again, the thickness of this wood or the cuts have to be the right size here um, to get the right pattern at the end. It's very important. And I just cut the end off uh, just to tidy up square one end off. And uh, then again, cut these to length as well. And this is what I'll be using. Right, it's part of this design that I'm doing, a uh, slightly new design that I've come up with. Um, so we're gonna have cherry, sapili, maple, panga panga, another piece of uh, maple, piece of cherry. It's gonna be two pieces of wenge because I don't have thick pieces of wenge so I'm sticking two pieces together. And then another piece of maple there, a piece of rosewood, another piece of panga panga, piece of cherry, wenge, cherry, wenge, maple, cherry, and finally a piece of purple heart. So that's basically the board. It's currently a little bit wider than I want it to, so it's it's nearly 13 inches wide but I do need to trim these down a little bit some of these need to be put through a thicknesser just to be um, bought down a bit um, and then I'm going to cut all these to the right height because you can see they're a little bit uneven at the moment um, so I want these all the right height before I do the glue up so a bit more work to do to before I do my first glue up um, but that's what it looks like at the moment and that's the order it's got to be in to get this design so the next bit is to just get these through the thickness uh, because they are all different heights and thicknesses and uh, so I've got to get these exactly right um, from a thickness perspective and then just get them all to the same height um, so there's less work to do later on. Uh, so yeah, that's what I'm doing now. Once they have all been done, uh, I can now get the first glue up done and uh, quite straightforward glue up the first one. So just pop them all into the clamps, obviously in the right order. Uh, get out the type bond free glue which is waterproof and uh, get gluing up I like to use a nice little paint roller just to spread the glue around just find it easier that way and then start loading it up with clamps um, I think in total including the pipe clamps I'm using about five clamps in total which is pretty much covers the whole thing I can't really fit any more on <laughs> so uh, but yeah plenty of clamps used whenever doing a glue up you uh, you want to make sure that the squeeze out is uh, nice and even throughout the, the chopping board once the glue has dried we can take all the clamps off nice and easy one two three four five gone and then get this it's a bit stuck oh there we go and then just go over there be a bit of a bead of glue on there um, where I didn't wipe the underside and things so just go over it with a chisel to clean up any glue or any mess so once it's out the clamps we just bring it over to the table saw and use the uh, crosscut sled to just tidy up the ends of the board because there's a couple of uneven pieces in there which are slightly longer than the rest so we're just tidying that up so now I've just got to get the router sled out and this is the router bit I use the large one of the two um, but they're basically the only ones I've got at the moment but I'd like to get a larger one to remove more material but I have to use what I've got at the moment but these work quite well it just means you have to go up and down that many more times but yeah if I can get a larger piece going forward a larger um, uh, route a bit which maybe does uh, maybe I don't know an inch and a half or two inch piece or something you know it'd, it'd make life a lot easier uh, but this, this this sled is simple design sled uh, it works really well and just go up and down that until 
it's nice and flat on top and you can see here it kind of leaves these little it looks like ripples but it's not it is very very flat at this point but uh, you just need to sand these out so I get the orbital sander out and just give this a light going over to get rid of those tiny little um, router bit ripples out if you like now I can't remember off the top of my head but I'm going over this with it's probably going to be about an 80 grit so it's fairly uh, fairly coarse uh, so it removes enough material so you know you're not spending all day doing it and then once I've finished doing this I just bring it over to the bench for, or a flat piece just to make sure it's nice and flat so now it's time just to cut this into pieces um, into strips if you like and uh, each piece I believe was one and a quarter inches in sort of thickness which will give it the overall thickness of one and a quarter inches um, and I set this up with a little stop block on the cross cut sled you can just see there and clamp it on and then start cutting through each piece. Once all the pieces have been cut, this is what we're left with. And this is why I've done this special pattern. So hopefully, at the moment, it just kind of looks a little bit, you know, it's uneven. It doesn't seem to be much of a pattern other than some random sort of bits of wood. But what you do, we're gonna be doing an end grain board here. So the first thing I need to do is, I need to put these up on their edge. we do the magic and we get this one and we flip it get the next skip one flip the next one skip one flip it skip one flip it skip one flip it and then do the last one and then what we should now end up with when we glue this together is a pattern which looks like it's got kind of like a road in the middle and that has actually turned out pretty spot on so now we end up with that i think that looks pretty cool so what i've got to do is i've now got to clean up these pieces because that circular saw has made that rough. But I think overall, um, that's gonna be a really nice pattern when it's finished. So now we do the second glue up, making sure we use plenty of glue and spread it on with my trusty paint roller to make life a little bit easier. So once the glue's on, time to get clamping and we pop uh, these back in the clamps again for its uh, second clamp up. Um, making sure that there's nice even pressure throughout and we also line up all the pieces so the lines are nice and straight. Uh, it's also been mentioned that exotic wood should be wiped down with acetane so I've actually managed to get hold of some now and uh, not that it was difficult I just bought it on Amazon and uh, I've got that now so I can wipe down uh, exotic woods going forward. So now it's about just getting the uh, router sled back out again um, just to smooth off the edges because the, the second glue up it left some slightly higher than um, others so I just really skimming off the top and then it's down to putting the handles on or should I say route the handles out rather than put them on so we just uh, same jig same kind of handle um, by the way this this board is for me myself again so this is going to be for when I put have chicken and things like this um, it's going to have juice grooves in it and stuff so um, that so that's the where this board is going to end up so I typically go over sort of about three passes maybe four passes to get the overall depth of the handle that I'm looking for but it normally ends up about 50% of the thickness of the board that I route out for each handle then just turn the board around and do the other side because it's got two handles now that I've done this quite a few times, I'm sort of getting used to the whole setup and routing out handles and things. It doesn't take that long now. 
um, with the jig. You can see here as well, I've got two clamps on now because uh, the jig moved before on other videos. So uh, I'm not going to make that mistake again. Um, and now we're just taking out the router bit, changing over the router bit to put this one on, which is just going to give the edges a slight round over. Um, because it's nice to have a slight rounded over edge on a chopping board so it's not sort of sharp and you know, splintery and you know, it's nice to touch really. Apologies for not moving the camera, it's a bit of a crappy camera angle isn't it? <laughs> you could see me in the top left there, just about going around the edges. Um, and the way I do this, I kind of do 50% of the board, unclamp it, turn it around and then do the other side. There you go, I'll move the camera now, that's a bit better. And again, now I've done this several times, starting to get used to it. You know, it's the, the whole process of making the boards is becoming easier and a bit quicker. Um, so it's it's all good. You can kind of see the pattern of the board now looking quite good. Um, it looks a lot better later when I put it, bathe it in mineral oil. So now it's sanding time and we love sanding. And on this board, there was a ton of sanding to do. Um, and even more sanding later once I've done the juice groove. And you can see there the little marks from the router sled. Uh, so they've all got to come out. So pretty coarse grit first. I also noticed that with the router sled, there was a little bit of tear out. And you can kind of see it on the strip there, the strip of cherry. You can see there's kind of like marks on it. it looks like marks, that's a little bit of tear out. And it's a real pain to sand out. I can't tell you how long I was sanding this for. Um, because it's end grain as well and end grain doesn't sand down as well as um, edge or face grain uh, or not as quickly and I was sanding this for hours trying to get these uh, sort of little bits of tear out out but eventually we got there um, and now it's time to do the juice groove and uh, this went pretty well actually um, the only thing I did do is I probably went a little bit the juice groove's quite wide. <laughs> it's quite a big juice groove, I think. Um, I, I went for, I can't remember the size, but I think next time I'll go for a slightly smaller uh, uh, router bit for the juice groove, because it just looks quite wide. But it still looks pretty good, actually, so it's, it's not turned out bad. And this is where sanding becomes a real pain, because trying to sand a juice groove it seems this router I've got always burns the corners uh, right in the corners and it's really hard to sand in those corners and actually get some decent movement going currently very cold here in the UK uh, frost on the ground there sanding by hand here just to try and warm up I think it was so cold in the morning apparently it's minus six in here Oof. <laughs> so back out with the orbital sander just now going down through the grits and uh, I think I end up going right the way through to 320 grit this time and then give it in a nice little wipe down before giving the garage a bit of a clean up. Keeping these on to keep my ears warm. So that's really looking nice. Uh, now it's got some mineral oil on it. Uh, you can really see the grain pop. The pattern looks absolutely spot on to what I wanted it. So I just leave that soaking for four hours and then just give it a drip dry uh, for about another hour and then mop it down a few times. And then I've got this uh, combination of mineral oil and beeswax that I made up and put into these little black pots. You know, I just put a good dollop of that on a cloth and then uh, 
go over the board with uh, with this. And finally, I just put some feet on and I bought these feet from Amazon. I got a bag, I think there was 200 feet in a bag. It comes with little screws as well. And uh, this little jig I made up, nice and simple jig, which just puts a hole in the exact same place in each of the corners. And then I hand tighten the feet onto the bottom of the board. And that completes the board. So thanks for watching everybody, I'm not sure I'm going to get another video out this side of Christmas, uh, very busy now but I'm leading up to Christmas, but if I don't see you have a fantastic Christmas holiday break and New Year and I will see you all most probably in the New Year. Guys, take care of yourselves, see you soon, bye now.